Today, the movie review is Avengers Age of Ultron, uh, which I know that came out two years ago. I'm late on this one. Uh, so why am I so late, you ask? Well, uh, I'll tell you since you asked. Uh, when the movie originally came out, it came out I think two summers ago now, I was new in the city, I just moved uh, here to Saigon, and I uh, didn't really have any friends to go to the theaters with, so I just, I miss the theatrical release. Uh, and then, um, after, it's one of those movies where you kind of have to see it in the theaters or really what's the point. And I know we live in a day and age where everyone downloads everything illegally on the internet anyways. Uh, so, like, I could have. Uh, e even without downloading it, there are several streaming sites here in Vietnam where you can stream movies. So I, I could have seen it, but like, really, what's the point of watching something on this small computer screen? Especially like these big action movies. Uh, with all these CGI action sequences and people jumping everywhere and like a million things, di different things going on in the frame. If you don't see it on the big screen, well, you, you don't want to watch it on a small computer screen at least. Uh, so that's, that's the primary reason I just didn't see it in the theaters and then just never bothered to get around with it. Also, it didn't help that the movie got very kind of tepid reviews. Uh, I, I mean, you, you know, you've read the same reviews I have, or you've read similar re reviews. Uh, people, people, nobody said the movie was terrible. Uh, some people said it, but the general tone was, eh, okay, not so great. Uh, and so, like, uh, you know, that didn't really inspire me to kind of run out and track down the nearest copy I could find. So I, uh, I just didn't see it. Um, but, you know, these Marvel movies all fit together. So if you miss one, you are kind of missing a piece in the puzzle. So, for example, when I saw Captain America Civil War uh, last year, around this time, uh, I was, you know, the, I was missing a piece. There were characters in there, like the Scarlet Witch and Vision, who I didn't know who they were. Uh, there was also lots of references to that big battle that took place in uh, the Eastern European fictional country. What was that? Estonia? I don't even remember. Um, and there were also references to kind of Hulk and Thor being missing. And I was like, alright, oh, where are Hulk and Thor? Uh, and now, we've got that new Hulk movie which will be coming out uh, next week here in Vietnam, I think, uh, about Hulk and Thor. Uh, and so I'm thinking, oh yeah, I should probably see Age of Ultron, you know, just to see where these guys end up before I see that movie. And I think I would like to see that new Hulk, that new Thor movie. Uh, it, it looks pretty good. Um, so there's all that, and then the movie just happened to be on TV uh, last week. And um, so like watching it on TV is like the small screen, but it's, it's, it's a big small screen. Like uh, it's bigger than my computer screen. So I thought, you know, like I don't want to watch this on the computer, but I can live with watching this on a TV. I've got a decent sized TV over here. Uh, and it was on HBO uh, SD Asia out here in Vietnam. So I thought, okay, yeah, might as well watch it. Uh, so watch it. It's a long movie. Uh, watch it. We get about two hours into it. Uh, and then the cable cuts out. And I said, no! <sighs> and I thought, nah, I, I'm, I'm not going to wait another two years for it to be on TV now. I just have like 30 minutes left to watch. Uh, so I watched it on one of those streaming sites here in Vietnam on the small screen. Uh, I, I, I had seen most of the big action fights, but yeah, in the end, in the end, I ended up watching it on the small screen anyways. So, so much for that. Uh, and on to the review, right. So, uh, this movie, uh, actually, let me take a step back and talk about my thoughts on the first Avengers movie. First Avengers movie was like such a great movie um, that it's kind of easy to forget, I think, how skeptical everybody was before the movie came out. Uh, we all thought, oh, this is going to be a disaster. Because, you know, they've got like five superheroes coming in from like six different movies. Uh, now I exaggerate. Um, or no, I don't exaggerate, because there, there was like 
Iron Man 2, and th there was like a whole bunch of movies leading into this. Um, and how are they going to juggle all these heroes and still kind of make a real movie? Like a real movie that felt like a movie with a kind of a single overarching plot instead of just like juggling all these different franchises together. And they did it. I mean, jo Joss Whedon, Joel Whedon, uh, he, he pulled the thing off. It felt like a real movie, even though it was juggling all these characters and all these different plot lines from different films. It works beautifully. Um, and I mention all that by way of contrast because, oh boy, does Age of Ultron ever not work beautifully as a movie. Age of Ultron is just a mess. Uh, they just the they just could not juggle juggle all these characters uh, and plot points. Um, so I I think they're uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna collect my train of thought. Let me let me make an overall comment here before I get into dissecting it. I think it was good enough. Like I give it maybe five out of ten stars. Like it wasn't terrible. But it was not spectacular either. Uh, it was just a very kind of meh movie. Um, so, I'll talk about the positives later. But the, yeah, let's talk about what made it so meh. Um, I think may, one of the things maybe that gets a little bit overlooked is, in retrospect, we had no right to expect an Avengers movie as good as it was on the first outing. And then once we got it, I think everyone just assumed all the movies were going to be wonderful from here on out. But, like, uh, we should have been more pessimistic. We should have said, okay, we got one good Avengers movie, but how likely are they going to be to pull off this minor miracle a second time? Because, you know, it was kind of a minor miracle that the first Avenger movie was as good as it was with all those different characters they were juggling. Uh, I think maybe in retrospect we should have expected that they would just kind of drop the ball sooner or later. Um, so there's that. Uh, also, but that being said, there were some bad choices made here that kind of compounded it. Uh, they crammed in way too many characters. Like, you already have all the Avengers. That's enough for a movie. Instead, they crammed in, like, the Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, and Vision, and they just didn't have time to develop any of these characters. They barely had time to introduce them. Uh, and then there was the bad guy, Ultron, who they didn't really have time to introduce either. Now this one admittedly is a necessary evil because you need a bad guy. I mean like I, I know the movie already has too many characters in it, but you, you need a bad guy otherwise there's no movie. Now the first movie, the first Avengers movie, they were able to take Loki from the Thor movies. Uh, which meant that they didn't have to introduce the villain. Uh, you just saw him and you're like, oh right, Loki, I know this guy from the Thor movies. Uh, or if, even if you hadn't seen the Thor movies, and I actually, I hadn't seen that first Thor movie when I saw the Avengers the first time. But even if you hadn't seen it, uh, you know, okay, here's someone who's obviously established in the universe. Unfortunately, they already, you, you know, they played the Loki card once. Uh, so I don't think there was... I don't know, maybe they could have recycled another villain, but I, I can't think of anyone who... I haven't thought about it, actually. Maybe if I thought about it and went through all the previous Marvel movies, I could have think, oh yeah, that guy would have worked as a villain. Um, but anyways, I, I, I'm going to assume, like, you need to introduce a new villain. Um, so, like, they needed to introduce Ultron, but boy... Ultron does not get much of an introduction here at all. He just, like, there's a little bit of a conversation between Tony Stark and uh, Bruce Banner, and they do a little bit of stuff in the lab, and then all of a sudden he just appears out of nowhere, and, like, almost no sooner has he appeared, he's got, like, two lines of dialogue before he goes evil. And then, like, for reasons that really don't make any sense, and, like, uh... You know, here's this being who just appeared out of nowhere, like, was just kind of created 
yesterday or immediately and then all of a sudden has all this kind of knowledge of the world and the English language and idioms and colloquialisms and all this stuff. Uh, some of this you accept because it's a comic book movie and you say, okay, I'm going to suspend my disbelief. But it was, it was really, it just came out of nowhere. It was, well, I want to say lazy writing. Except it wasn't really lazy writing. It was they had too much plot points and they couldn't they couldn't develop it even if they wanted to. But it, like it sure felt lazy and underdeveloped. Um, yeah, and then he just kind of shows up uh, and like Tony Stark, who kind of created this guy, uh, should have had a lot more kind of like there was never really any room in the movie for him to kind of process. <sighs> What did I do? I created this. All of these people are dying because of me. I'm assuming people are dying. Uh, I, I, lots. There were there were big fights in major cities where there were a lot of destruction. Uh, you didn't really see a lot of people dying, but I'm assuming this. Uh, and then in Captain America: Civil War, we later found out that yes, a lot of these people are dying. Anyways, I'm off topic. Uh, point is, they never really gave Tony Stark any kind of emotional any time to process it. The other Avengers, there's a gets brought up a couple times, but it really there's no kind of room in the story to kind of for Tony Stark to kind of process the responsibility of this. And if you're not going to create that kind of room in the story for it, then why have him be Tony Stark's creation at all? I mean, why not just have him be an alien technology or something? Or I don't know. Uh, I I think I think maybe in the comic books. Tony Stark created it so that they're copying the comic books. Is that right? I, I was always more of a DC uh, kid as, as, a, as a boy, uh, as a comic book fan. Uh, so I don't know my Marvel stuff as well. But then they, they bring in Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. Now again, I, I just admitted I was always more of a DC guy as a kid. But I think in the comic books, these were Magneto's kids. Uh, so they're kind of tied into the Magneto and the X-Men um, mythos, but they were also part of the Avengers team, which I think is how Marvel Cinematic Universe still gets the rights to them, even though Quicksilver has also been appearing in the X-Men movies. Um, now in this in this version, because you know because Fox has a copyright to the X-Men, uh, Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch uh, have totally revamped origin stories where they're kind of kids who Hydra does human experiments on to give them kind of powers. Uh, so they get introduced and yeah, like there is the very little backstory, kind of almost no characters built up. They side with Ultron for reasons that uh, make sense kind of and then they're, they're just not, they're, they're just not introduced as well. Like, we don't know nearly as much about them as we know about all the other Avengers. Uh, I don't really care because they're kind of crammed into the story. And then, spoilers, I'm going to spoil stuff because this movie is two and a half years old now. Um, Quicksilver dies at the end. Everyone knows that by now anyways. And they try and kind of milk some sort of pathos out of this. And you're like, ah, what are you doing? Like, who, I don't, I barely even got to know this character. I don't care about him, don't give him a dramatic death. You know, like, like if, you, and what's the point really? Like, if you're gonna cram more heroes into the story uh, because you wanna kinda spin off more movies, then like, fine, do that. But don't like cram more heroes into the story just to kill them off by the end of the movie. I, well, I mean, what was the point of that? And then Vision, who like, really gets introduced out of nowhere. Like, uh, it was like, okay, I like, there was, there was some discussion leading up to Vision's creation, so I got that, I got Tony Stark's idea, I got the fact that they were trying to import Jarvis in there. So like I got the idea behind his creation, but then once he's created, you're like, okay, there's a strange new purple superhero, and he just, just same as Ultron, he just kind of springs out of nowhere and all of a sudden has, is not only kind of sentient, but is kind of like a fully cognitively developed and seems to kind of know about the world. Uh, and then whew, all of a sudden he's off joining in the fight and like, boy, they did, you know, he did not get like any time at all to kind of 
develop or get used to being alive or I don't know I again you suspend some of your disbelief because it's a comic book movie so you're like oh okay he just sprang out of nowhere and all of a sudden he has a fully formed sense of himself and a purpose and he's he's going to kind of join in the fight yeah you don't want to get too existential about these comic book movies but like and plus the, the movie was already over crammed with characters so I'm like well I don't I don't really care about this guy anyway sure whatever throw him in the mix uh, and then he gets the final showdown with uh, Ultron, kind of, I guess. Uh, lots of, Ultron has lots of kind of final showdowns. Um, so there were way too many characters. There were also kind of, I think it was a bit of a slog to get through this movie. And part of that is back to the first point about having too many characters. But there was also just kind of a sense of rushing from point A to point B in the plot. And it wasn't really, I mean, when you think about it, the plot wasn't really that complicated. It was like an evil, you know, they're fighting an evil robot. That, that's the plot. Um, but, you know, like, there were different set pieces that had to be incorporated and stuff like that. Uh, and all these characters there juggling. Uh, it just felt like a bit of a slog. Uh, and, again, some of this may have been because it was on the small screen. I'm, it, I'm sure it played bigger, better on the big screen. All that being said, uh, the action scenes were pretty decent, kind of. Uh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna qualify that remark. The action scenes were great for what they were. Uh, unfortunately, for this movie, we already kind of saw most of this in the first Avengers movie. So, like, it's a little bit get a little bit bored with it the second time. I mean, it was still kind of exciting. But, you know, you had the Avengers kind of fighting like a faceless uh, horde, uh, which they did in the first movie. And a lot of the kind of, I feel like a lot of the same moves kind of were brought back. A lot of the same kind of, I don't know, it just felt a lot like the first movie. But it was decent for what it was. I, I, was, I was decently entertained by the action scenes. I count this movie as watchable. Uh, also, that, that fight scene between Iron Man and the Hulk was great. Uh, I mean, that, that, that made the whole movie, really. That was just, like, an awesome scene. And I know it's cliche to have kind of two superheroes fighting against each other, but, like, it's the Hulk. Like, this is what he does. He fights against everyone. And so, kind of having Iron Man trying to take down the Hulk, uh, and, you know, the, it, it, it was a good scene. Um... On the whole, I, uh, I was thinking about the rating for this movie, and I thought, ah, it really wasn't that great of a movie. I think I'm going to knock it down to like a four. Um, but then I thought, well, I mean, the thing is, uh, and maybe this is kind of uh, an unfair way of rating these movies, because maybe, maybe you say, no, they've got to kind of stand or fall on their own merits. But I think the thing is kind of viewed in the context of the Marvel franchise, you have somewhat of an, uh, you spend time with these characters in all the other movies, and you, ha you, have, you have like a connection with them, uh, and you like them. So even though like each character kind of doesn't get enough screen time, you already know who these characters are, so they don't need that much screen time. I mean, you already kind of know and like Tony Stark. You already kind of know and like Captain America. So the fact that they kind of just kind of... The fact that they don't really get developed in this movie doesn't really matter so much at this point in the franchise. Uh, you just... You see them bantering a little bit, and you're like, oh, okay, that, you know... Those are some good character movements. I don't, I don't need, like, the whole development thing. So, kind of based on that, I think I'm going to bump up the rating to like a five star. Um, just kind of slightly, not, not below average, it's, it's a good solid average movie. Uh, and, um, I don't know, you could, you could maybe even talk me into six stars if I thought long and hard enough about it, because it is... And the Marvel Cinematic Universe, despite all the problems this movie has, 
It is one of those movies where you get to see all the superheroes. So, like, how great is that, huh? And there are some good action scenes. Ah, no, no, no. Five stars. I'm going to stick with five stars. Okay. So, I think that's all I have to say about this. Five stars. I'm going to sign off.